At the beginning of 2018, it was announced that the Lithuanian army would be changing its soldier's combat or field uniform. The pattern of the fabric would be printed in a universal camouflage pattern, meant to adapt to as many as four different environments. The plan was for the uniforms to be gradually replaced over three years, and was said to be even cheaper than the ones they replaced. While it may not be a super exciting topic for some people, I find it interesting. And well, I guess that's all that matters when it comes to making a video on this YouTube channel. So let's just get started. It would seem to me that the Lithuanian Land Force's current combat uniforms were somewhat inspired by what the US Army tried to do back in 2004. Create a pattern that could be used in both forest and woodland environments, but also desert and arid environments, and maybe even urban environments. With this goal of being a two-in-one pattern, the US Army's design was given the name UCP, or Universal Camouflage Pattern. As most people who follow military news know by now, the uniform pattern meant to work everywhere didn't actually work anywhere. The Army's overpaid consultants forgot to consider how shadows would factor into the pattern's design, and to top it off, they didn't test the design before slapping it on thousands of spongy 19-year-olds and shipping them to the desert to pay for college. Even worse, the UCP uniform cost an estimated $5 billion to develop and make, and it quickly developed a reputation as a huge waste of money. About 15 years after it was introduced, it was phased out in favor of the Green and Brown Operational Camouflage Pattern Uniform, or OCP. So the pattern was bad, but the idea was good, and Lithuania was looking for something that could actually do that job, without costing billions of dollars to develop. An LRT article says that it was Lithuania's Special Operations Forces who spoke about the need to change the pattern of uniforms to a universal one, because that was also being done by allies like the United States and the United Kingdom. A military media statement says that sometime in the late 2000s, a working group was established by order of the commander of the Lithuanian Armed Forces. The task was to prepare a concept of the 21st century soldiers' clothing and equipment system, and one of those directives was to switch to a single pattern and coloring field uniform. The first of these uniforms was tested by the Lithuanian Special Operations Forces, carrying out combat missions with them in Afghanistan. After the first field tests, there were a few corrections and adjustments, but after this, it was decided that the uniforms with this pattern would be introduced throughout the entirety of Lithuania's land forces. A description of the design of the fabric pattern with a universal camouflage pattern was prepared back in 2013, then in 2014, the design was registered at the State Patent Office. The design of the uniforms is the property of the Lithuanian military and can only be worn by members of the Lithuanian Armed Forces. Spokesperson for Lithuania's Defense Resources Agency of the Ministry of Defense, Captain Marius Matukas, stated, The Allied troops actually appreciated it. They asked who created it, who initiated it, etc. Various interesting questions arose. They compared their uniforms, their pattern with those of the Lithuanian army, and the feedback was really excellent. The results showed that. So there was no doubt that eventually we would switch to a universal pattern. The incoming uniform replaced this green forest pattern and was intended for up to four types of environment, forest, city, hilly area, and deserts. The cut and design of the new uniform remained identical to the previous field uniform, with only the fabric being different, made from a material that was said to be significantly more resistant to wear. Lieutenant Colonel Aimantas Jodzevichus, acting commander of the Logistics Board of the Lithuanian Armed Forces, said, The decision to revise the color scheme of the uniform was determined by several factors. Soldiers noted that the green print uniforms now used on missions stand out in a non-wooded area, such as a city. The uniforms of the new sample were tested out by soldiers of the Special Operations Forces, and after their evaluation, a decision was made to gradually update the uniforms. LRT says that the designer of the Lithuanian uniform design was a Special Forces soldier, and they're distinguished from the uniforms of allies by a coded sign. Captain Matukas says that the Vitas cross sign is hidden in the pattern itself. We can just see the contours, which cannot be seen with the naked eye. I can't see it. I tried, but I really don't see anything. I talked to a Lithuanian soldier about it, and he tells me that he can't find anything either. However, he says that the columns of Gediminas, or Gediminaichu Stupe, can be seen. I've also tried to look for this symbol, but also, no luck for me. That is so cool! Where is it? <laughs> right here! I'm looking there! No, no, unfocused! I am unfocused! 
When it comes to cost, the Lithuanian army says only slightly more than 3,000 euros was spent on creating this new uniform design. This quoted cost includes samples and prototypes too. This is a lot less than the 5 billion that the US Army's failed universal pattern cost. Even better, it was reported that the new field uniform would be about one tenth cheaper than the force print uniform it replaced. Funds would also be saved by eliminating the need to have two uniform patterns, a green print and one for international operations. The low cost, compared to how effective it is, makes me think of the video that I made about NATO member nations meeting their 2% spending target on defense. I didn't really get to say it in the video, but it's clear that spending money in absolute terms isn't everything. It's really all about spending money properly. And so even though the United States spends way more money than all of its other NATO allies, the country and its defense industry have known to be pretty wasteful too. This topic was even touched on in the December 2016 edition of Lithuania's military journal slash magazine, Karis. Translated from Lithuanian, a paragraph has this to say. There is no other way to explain why the superpower, which has a huge amount of intellectual and material resources, has not solved the simple textile problem for more than 10 years. During that time, while carrying out promising armament reforms, many smaller countries with much more modest defense budgets also quite successfully solved the issues of new clothing. Why? Probably because, to paraphrase K.G. Jung, small countries solve small problems, big countries solve big problems. Interesting, right? But going back to the relatively new Lithuanian pattern, Lithuanian Prime Minister at the time, Saulis Skvernelis, was quoted as saying, changes are not made to show off, to be prettier, they're made for what is functional, for what is best in the world. The rollout of these uniforms has been gradual. It was noted that first priority for getting the uniforms would be for the soldiers of the units belonging to rapid reaction forces. Next in line were other soldiers in the professional military service, as well as military academy cadets. And then it was on to national defense volunteer forces, and then permanent mandatory initial military service soldiers, which I think are conscripts. To connect some of my own personal experiences to this topic, I actually served with the Canadian military as a reservist for a few years, which I would say is the equivalent of Lithuania's National Defense Volunteer Forces, or KASP. I remember way back in the day when I joined, the Canadian forces were near the end of transitioning from a plain and simple olive drab to the new and exciting digital camouflage pattern that has the name CADPAT. I remember how eager everyone was to get it, and soldiers who got it before others drew the envy of their colleagues but I can imagine it must have been a similar vibe of excitement for Lithuanian soldiers getting their new uniforms with a new pattern. Canada's cat pat came in two versions, one for woodlands and another for desert regions. Of course, if you wore the desert ones, it was a clear sign that you had been deployed to Afghanistan, and of course that earned you extra respect. But funny enough, in doing the research for this video, I learned that the Canadian military recently developed its own multi-terrain cat pat variant, and this is currently being introduced to the Canadian forces. So there you go. Everyone's working on some kind of universal multi-terrain pattern these days. Wow, who knew I could make such a long video about the pattern of a military uniform? Again, it's something I find quite fascinating. And so if you've made it this far, congratulations. I guess you find it interesting too. So what do you think of the latest Lithuanian pattern? Did you know the story behind it? Let me know by leaving a comment. For the Lithuanian word of the day, it seems appropriate to use something like camouflages or uniforma, but those almost seem too easy. Maybe let's go with the word marginemas, which translators say means printing or print, but I think in the context of military uniform design, print or pattern would be the most fitting. Marginemas. Let me know if you think I'm wrong. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Ну, я не знаю, что вы тут будете, у вас, да? Я рекомендую вам не